So we haven't shown any of you this house yet on YouTube anyway, but it's a really cool project. I'll give you a quick tour and tell you a little bit about it. Apologize today, I don't have it mic'd. I don't have uh, any kind of stabilizer on this, so we'll do the best we can, but I'll give you a quick tour. Really cool client, reached out to us through the design service and he was especially excited about his theater, which we'll show you in a second. He's doing some really cool stuff, but he was also interested in Lutron lighting, uh, the Ketra integration from Lutron and Josh.ai, as well as kind of what he can do with all their shades. So. Um, when it's all tied together. So really, really cool project. I'll give you a sneak peek uh, and I'm trying to fix a wire in a theater. I'll show you that too while we're here. So come on inside. So real fast, I'm gonna give you a tour of the theater room. But before I do that, real quick, I've gotta fix this speaker wire back here before the mutters get here and finish mudding it then I'm screwed. So that was a big hot button for the client. For some reason, we had the wire placed right and they pulled it back into a different stud base. So I gotta take that panel down real fast uh, and then fix it. And then I'll give you a cool tour of the whole house. All right, we got the speaker wire moved. So I'll tell you real quick why that was important and then I'll give you the tour. So the screen wall behind me is gonna be a 200 inch screen anamorphic uh, or 235, okay? So it's gonna go almost the full width of that wall behind me. And on the left side and on the right side are gonna be floor standing speakers from Paradigm. And if that speaker wire were cheated in six inches like it was, then we've got to place that speaker in front of the screen or have wire visible as it comes out of the wall and into the back of that speaker. So it was really important to get that wire moved over six inches. This is something that happens all the time during construction and it's, I wouldn't blame the sheetrock guys. Sometimes wires get covered up by insulation, they can't see. They put up sheetrock and it covers our wires. We got to come in after sheetrock and find out where all of our wires are get them pulled back through in place. And we do a lot of things during pre-wire to try and prevent that and minimize it, but inevitably it happens on every single job. We'll start here with the demo. Okay, this is a theater room and it's gonna be cool. On this far side here, they've got views out to the mountains. So they're gonna have blackout shades that, you know, flick of a button or just out of the eye, those will all come down. And then as I mentioned, behind me is gonna be the screen wall. And it's gonna be a really, really cool theater. This guy loves his home cinema, loves his audio, loves his video. So he's gonna have a top-notch projector, still kind of undecided yet on what he's gonna do. He's looked at things like digital projection. He's looked at things like um, Sony's brand new laser. He's looked at JVC, he's looked at Wolf. Not totally decided yet which direction we're going, but it's gonna be cool, whatever it is. He's gonna have a 200 inch screen, 235 format, like I mentioned. And then something really cool he's doing in here is what we call separates. So he's gonna have, um, instead of having a surround sound receiver that does the processing and the power, He's gonna have what's called a pre-processor that processes all the signal and the information. Then he's gonna have separate amplifiers. And then he's gonna have his persona speakers all across the back wall, um, persona subs. And it's wired for a 7.2.6. So six Atmos speakers over top, seven surround sounds around the house. Okay, pretty cool. And then when you walk into the back of this theater room is his office, okay, right behind the theater. And you see again, we've got the wall-to-wall -wall windows and then overlooking uh, the golf course out the back. So it's a spectacular view. And this is actually all part of a big master suite. As you kind of come with me, you'll see now we're in like actual master suite area. And again, we've got near floor to ceiling doors that are gonna give this beautiful view out the back of the golf course. And then more windows in front of me views to the mountain. And it's this big, open, spacious room. So because this is all one big space that's all tied together, we want it to look uniform as you're walking from the master to the office and into the theater room, okay? So these windows here, we could put the shades in the casing. That would be totally acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we don't wanna do is have it vary as you go room to room aesthetically. So we're actually gonna do eyebrows across all of these so that it matches the doors and the windows in the office and the master bedroom. So I'm not saying that's how you have to do it. That's an aesthetic decision that they made here to try and make it uniform. So when people are asking me, how do I wire my windows? Well, it depends a little bit, okay? If I knew that the roller size could fit inside of the casing, I would just run the wire right there to the corner about six inches in, and then I would have shades that could drop down inside the casing. If the room had been engineered so that we could do pockets, up in the ceiling where you kind of, as you get close to the wall, there's like a eight inch pocket that goes up into the ceiling taller that you can't see unless you walk right to the edge of the, of the wall. Then we could hide our shades up in there and it would roll down. 
So in terms of system design, we've got these huge doors on the back of this building. And there's a couple ways you could do this. So this door right here, you could split into two shade panels. So that side would be one panel and this side would be one panel. It would cover kind of the two things of glass on this side. One panel would cover the two things of glass on that side, right? And those could come down together or interchangeably depending on how you order it, how you program it. This client, because it's his master suite, would prefer to have this be one huge window, which can be done, but it changes some of the installation elements, okay? So that roller is gonna get huge because of how much fabric is rolling up. So there won't be room to mount it inside of the casing for the window or the door. And they didn't have the engineering here that we could do true pockets up above. So what we have to do here is do kind of eyebrows up above. So you can see where the shade wires are. Those are gonna be for eyebrows where we're gonna run kind of the shade fascia right across the top and then those rollers will come down. Okay, so down on the main level, a couple of fun things. Again, we've got huge windows and doorways that oversee the golf course and keep that view. This is kind of the kitchen great room area. And this wall here, again, client loves theater and audio and really good theater, really good audio. So this wall back here is going to be a short throw projector. Right now we're eyeballing the new Samsung short throw projector. And again, some separate, um, not a separate, but we're gonna do persona speakers. So there's gonna be Persona speakers from Paradigm on the right side and the left side, a center channel. It's got Atmos speakers overhead. And then back here behind me, kind of behind the stairs, you can see the speaker wire right there, another speaker wire. So he's gonna have kind of the rears down here. So it's gonna be an amazing system down here in the great room. He kids around about it a lot. That's gonna keep his kids down here watching so that nobody bugs him in his cinema upstairs. I can't say that I blame him, but it's gonna be really, really cool. From my car lovers that follow us, okay? for my guy Brandon that helps us with our videos. So this is his showroom. Okay, and these are the windows, all kinds of cool stuff they had to do to make this fire rated and decode. So he can be here in his great room and look out at his cars. And he's got some really cool cars. And when he walks out here into his showroom garage, he'll have his cars out here all on display. He'll have music and the catcher lighting so he can set the mood here. He talked about it for him, this is like art. So he's gonna have the exact mood of light that he wants when he's shining everything on his cars, have the music he wants, just sit out here and enjoy his cars, or he can be inside watching his movie and turn around and admire his cool cars. So it's gonna be fun. This is sort of the gym slash hot tub room. Again, you got a really cool view overlooking the golf course. So as we're standing in this room, this wall right here is gonna be for the TV. And where I'm standing right now is sort of the workout area of the house, okay, uh, or of the room. But right behind me is the hot tub, okay? And one of the concerns for the client was, well, when I'm standing here watching TV and working out, I wanna be able to hear the sound really, really well. But when I'm back here in my hot tub, I wanna be able to hear the sound well when the bubbles and everything are going for the TV or whatever it is I'm watching. So there's actually two sound bars in this room plus home audio speakers. So there's one sound bar for the TV when he's over here working out. And you can't see it yet because the sheet rock guy's covered it up. But right up here above me is going to be what's called a sky bar from TDG Audio. And it's basically an in-ceiling sound bar. So it's going to have three speakers in it and it's going to project right down on top of the hot tub. And basically when he's in the hot tub watching the TV, he can select that sound bar. When he's working out, he can select the sound bar at the TV. And between the two, you can have this really cool experience here for a sound. So we're excited for that one. Big fans of TDG. So it'll be fun to use their stuff here. So this is the beginning of the rat closet. So he's got three panels here and he's actually got a couple more panels. We're gonna go here on the side that aren't here yet. And then over here, this big bundle of blue wire is for all of his shade wire. There's actually gonna be a big power supply that comes in here to power all of his shades. And then we've got to vent all the heat into the garage behind it. So it's actually gonna be two racks. And it's funny, one rack's basically gonna be his theater rack. The other rack's gonna be for everything else in the home. He's gonna have a lot of fun here. I wanna tell you just a little bit about what he's doing with Ketra Lighting, okay? So if you followed us online, you saw our project in Boca Raton, Florida. We used USAI Lighting, which is a um, manufacturer that does low voltage lighting where you get full color and full temperature control. So you can go from a really warm light to a really cool light at the flick of a button, uh, or you can use your voice and say, hey, I want a vibrant feel or a warm feel, and then you get into what's called circadian rhythms, where the light on the inside of the house kind of matches 
the temperature of the light on the outside of the house. So when you wake up in the morning, the light in the inside of your house feels like sunrise. And when you go to bed at night, the light in your house feels like sunset. And that helps kind of our body clock do its thing. So that's not new, that's been out for a long time, but there are newer solutions out there. And what's cool here is they're doing Ketra, which is a solution from Lutron. So every single one of these cans has, um, is getting a Ketra lamp. I had somebody blow me up and say, well, it's not low voltage, it's high voltage. And fine, we can get into that in another conversation, okay? But if you're researching this, it's gonna pull up under low voltage lighting, okay? So um, Ketra, USAI, uh, Color Beam, these are low voltage lighting solutions. Yes, there's a high voltage component in it, but it's in the wheelhouse of low voltage lighting, okay? What's gonna happen is every single one of these lights, first and foremost, is addressable. So in theory, if you wanted to, you could have these three lights be one color, and then you could have all of the lights here behind them be a different color. I'm not totally sure why you would wanna do that, but you can. But what's cooler is that Josh.ai, which is a voice integration platform, it's kind of like Alexa on steroids, it's fully integrated with both Control 4 and Ketra. So you can walk into a room and you can say, hey, uh, I want to go to art mode, or I want to go to, if you know your Kelvins, you can say, I want 3,500 Kelvin, or you can say, I want a blue light. Whatever you want, and the lights are going to instantly change in that room to whatever the color temperature is. If you haven't seen it, we actually filmed one of their demos. I'll link it here, and you can pull it up and watch the demo. But that's what they're doing in here. And we could do USAI. USAI was fantastic. The difference here is the client knows he wants to use Josh.ai, and Josh.ai and Ketra are, the two teams got together and were, well, Josh anyway, and worked out all the programming in advance. So when it's all loaded in, all those different color temperatures are already piped into Josh, so you can walk into the room anytime you want and just tell Josh to change the color or the temperature, tell Josh to lower the shades, um, tell Josh to turn on the theater, it's gonna be really, really cool. Okay, now the other thing they did is they piped it all into a Control 4 system. So basically the way that this is gonna work is Control 4 is really gonna run their audio video and to a large extent, the lighting and the shade control. But Josh.ai will let them piggyback and use voice control when they wanna run all those scenes right from their voice. So we'll have the two in tandem. But anyway, it's gonna be a really, really cool project. Uh, we'll have more on this. We'll give you updates as it moves along. But She Rock's almost done. I mean, it's gonna be painting here in a couple of weeks. Uh, and we'll start ordering equipment and loading in, and it's gonna be way fun. So we'll see you around.